Rocket Lab just launched two launches in under 48 hours and they signed a game-changing deal with the European Space Agency. From New Zealand to Virginia and maybe next Europe, Rocket Lab could be on its way to becoming a global launch provider. Let's go ahead and break it down. And you can see here, just as I predicted last week, Rocket Lab joined the Russell 1000 on June 27th. There it is, folks, right in the iShares Russell 1000 ETF. And my next prediction for Rocket Lab, S&P 500 in five to 10 years. So the past two launches uh, completed by Rocket Lab basically just showcase how quickly they can ramp up their launch cadence. This is a game changer because it is showing a rapid reusability by Rocket Lab. They are able to reuse that same launch pad and launch a whole nother rocket in under 48 hours. So this is really quick. I mean, it, they really made haste for this one, right? I'm just kidding, but you know what I mean. I mean, when I saw how quickly they did the turnaround and then I saw the, the stock price, how it went up this week, I literally thought to myself, get the hawk out of here. I mean, th this has just been completely out of left field. The, the whole thing with the ESA, the European Space Agency, that I kind of had a feeling Rocket Lab would eventually be expanded to that, but I didn't quite see it happening this soon. So that was really exciting to see them get that contract. Although when they did make that uh, past acquisition um, of the German company, it did kind of signal and hint that that is the direction that they were heading because the European Space Agency typically likes to utilize companies on their own turf. I mean, you know, they, they, they wanna play, you know, the home field, so to speak. So the two launches of Get the Hawk Out of Here by Hawkeye360 and Symphony in the Stars by a mystery uh, provider. Who, who knows, I, again, I kind of thought it was gonna be for the, uh, the Lyra constellation with the Echo Star, but I could be wrong. It could be something totally else, but it, it would be interesting if eventually they kind of divulge what that confidential mission really was. I'm sure it has all of you intrigued, especially if you're constantly watching the many different launches that Rocket Lab does. So the ESA basically selected Rocket Lab to launch the Pathfinder satellites in December of this year, 2025. So that is a start of working with the European Space Agency and bringing Rocket Lab to becoming a global launch provider. Um, you know, they've already have been launching and beginning, you know, in New Zealand and, you know, went ahead with the Wallops Island in Virginia to be part of the United States. And now they're launching a mission for the European Space Agency. Now, this also goes back to them changing their namesake, basically, from Rocket Lab USA to Rocket Lab Corporation. To me, that's also hinting at global expansion. They're not just thinking of themselves as being USA or, you know, sticking the USA name. I think they want to go more global. And in order to do that, you know, to have something like Rocket Lab Corporation would be a, a more sound uh, foundation to, to move forward with that. So the question I've been kind of asking myself is, could Rocket Lab possibly be thinking of going into the European market next? And to what extent might they possibly do that? I'm not saying this is gonna happen right away. Of course, Rocket Lab is already having a lot of their focus on building the Neutron rocket, but sometime down the road in the future, you know, could Rocket Lab possibly also launch from European soil? 
you know, it, there's always a possibility. Now this is speculation. I'm not saying Rocket Lab is doing this or has an idea to do this. I'm just saying this is my speculation of what Rocket Lab's future could entail. And I, I think it's a pretty cool idea. Now here's the thing, the ESA contracts are already showing early trust in Rocket Lab, even before they even have a launch pad on European soil. And if Rocket Lab has launch pads in Europe, it could provide even more optionality for, for different areas and points to launch at, depending on weather, depending on you name it, um, that there's just a broader field of options on where to launch from in the hemispheres, you know, between Mejia and New Zealand and Wallops Island and Virginia and who knows where else in Europe, which we will talk about that later on. I'll go over where I think Rocket Lab might possibly expand if they were to go into a Europe launch pad. But think about it, it, it would also be a NATO aligned responsive launch as well. So, you know, you have the European NATO countries, uh, the US is a part of that. It could go hand in hand with, with NATO to have uh, a launch pad in Europe for Rocket Lab. Now, where do I think they might have a possible launch pad? I'm, I, you know, there's several possibilities. Norway could be one for their polar sun synchronous orbit. That could be a possibility. Another possibility could be Scotland for a UK defense appeal. I could definitely see them going with a UK launch site, especially because their haste program was on ramped for the US and the UK defense programs. So it would make a lot of sense to have an additional launch site other than Wallops Island in Virginia to have one in Scotland as well. Another area that they would possibly even consider launching from would be the French Guiana because the ESA actually has infrastructure there. So, I mean, that would be easily integrated there. And of course the European space agencies there. So I could also see French Guiana working as well. So, you know, Rocket Lab could be anywhere from Norway to Scotland, French Guiana, unless, you know, they have a whole new area where they're also thinking about besides those three current spaceports. So, I mean, those are just my ideas for now, but who knows, Rocket Lab is full of surprises. And where do you think Rocket Lab would go if they had to have a European spaceport? Where do you think they would go? Be sure to leave your remark in the comments below and let me know what you think. Remember, this is purely speculation on my end. I am not saying that they're doing this. I'm just saying, wouldn't it be cool if they did, if they became a true global powerhouse launcher, you know, because they're already building a relationship with the ESA, who knows, they might actually do this down the line in the future. We will have to wait and see. I I'm just speculating and as a huge fan of Rocket Lab, I want to see what you all think. Do you think this is also a possibility down the road? And if you do, where do you think they're going to pick to go have their spaceport and their space launcher uh, based in Europe. So just to recap, Rocket Lab is launching faster than ever. Their turnaround rate is showing what a quick and dedicated launch provider Rocket Lab is, which is definitely increasing their success rate of their launches and making them a strategic launcher, not just in the US, but also abroad, especially with these ESA contracts that they won for December of this year, which that is gonna be a fun uh, launch to watch. So I will be sure to mark that on my calendar, but this could also be indicative of a global growth for Rocket Lab as a company from the name change to the ESA contracts to the past acquisition of the German company. With all these coming together, I really think Rocket Lab is more than Rocket Lab USA. It will be Rocket Lab Corporation and Rocket Lab Global, basically. As far as what this does for the share price, I mean, right now the share price just soared, basically. I think from Rocket Lab being in the Russell 1000 index fund and the institutional buyers, you know, giving it that upward push, but it, it's also coming from that ESA contract because it's showing that Rocket Lab is becoming 
a global launcher, okay? Not just for the US, but also for Europe. And then, you know, they had their back-to-back -back launches. I don't think it was the actual launch being successful that pushed the stock price up. Rocket Lab, if you've been following this company like I have, I've been following them since 2021 when I've been doing videos on Rocket Lab. And for all these years that I've been covering Rocket Lab, you know, I've never really seen the stock go up because of a launch. Mostly it goes up, you know, for, for company-wide news other than a launch. And I think it went up this week uh, with the ESA contract, the Russell uh, 1000, and also it wasn't the launch, but it was the cadence. It was the rapid back-to-back -back under 48 hours. I think that's what made the impact. That's what made it not necessarily like a regular launch. It was how quick the turnaround time really was. I think that also played a factor. Those three things combined, you know, and then the upcoming Neutron end of this year, just all of that anticipation and excitement from the shareholders and now uh, institutional interest, you know, that is just a recipe for upward momentum. And Rocket Lab is at all time highs right now. But guess what? So is the S&P 500. So is the stock market in general. The stock market in general has been on a complete tear. And I mean like upwards, not downwards. So what, what do I think about the stock price going from here? You know, this, this stock market has been surprising. These developments have, have been quicker than expected with the ESA. Um, you know, I don't know. If we hear something really good about Neutron, it, it could easily keep pushing the stock momentum up, even though we're at all time highs. Right now, we're just in such an influx. I feel like the, the stock is so sensitive to anything, anything. like. Anything could send it up and anything could send it down at this point. Any any news of a neutron delay is obviously going to put some disappointment into this, the share price. Anything good released about neutron in the coming days could definitely push it up. So, you know, a dollar cost average at this point. If you're still buying, just dollar cost, do your regular buys because we are just at such an inflection point right now being at this all time high in the share price. Do I think it's gonna go higher? Yeah, I don't think, you know, 36, 35, and 37 dollar, I don't think that range is the ultimate share price I have in mind. If Neutron's successful, easily 50 dollars. Probably more, to be honest, but easily 50 dollars if they have a successful Neutron flight. Um, so we will have to see. And if you enjoy following me and you enjoy learning more and you know discussing things about rocket lab then be sure to hit the like and subscribe button because every saturday i will be bringing you rocket lab saturday here on the stock trek channel with me stock trek girl now i know in the uh last rocket lab saturday video i said to be cautious when purchasing the stock and that was with the knowledge of the Russell 1000 inclusion, possible institutional investors passively buying it, might have already bought their, their lump sum already. But um, the ESA contract news was dropped, and I do believe that definitely put momentum on the share price. Not just the ESA contract, but the rapid turnaround of the two launches back-to-back uh, -back in 48 hours. That cadence also, I believe, helped push up the share price. So, with that said in mind, you never know with Rocket Lab. You just never know what they might come up with and surprise us with next. So why not another launch pad being announced one day? We'll have to see, but I I'm gonna put a little bookmark to myself on this video because if they do ever announce a global launch somewhere in Europe, then I'm going to say I said it right here in this video. And as always, until next time, invest long and prosper.